Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we are going to be continuing on with the depth system just to add the jump functionality that I was talking about. So I've just got a little illustration here for you. So if you have a jump in the game currently and you're using my depth system, you're probably noticing that when you jump, this is kind of happening. So when you go above an object, when you're jumping, you're suddenly getting drawn behind it. Which makes sense if you're manipulating the y variable of this instance when you're jumping to be higher than it kind of should be. Um, the depth system is just going to sort that object as being higher than that object, and it's going to draw it first. Which is not what we want. If it's just jumping, I want it to jump like this. Right, so I want it to kind of keep its position in the world and have its depth sorted by that. Uh, and to do this, we are going to introduce another axis to the world, because at the moment, Game Maker basically just works on two axes, so the X axis and the Y axis. And to do jumping, we can still just use the Y axis and kind of fake the 3D, but just to keep track of our position in the game world for the depth system, we are going to be introducing a Z axis. And that is kind of represented, as you can see, by these little blue dots that I have. So currently, right now, all the objects are on the ground. The difference between their Y position and their kind of position on the Z axis is both zero. But if I jump, you can see that although the king's Y position is higher than this scout, I suppose, the knight or the scout or whatever, when I'm jumping, it's still remaining kind of in front of the scout green object, um, because my depth system at the moment is taking into account its Z position, not just the Y position. And basically, all I want to do to the depth system is have it not only take into account the Y when it's sorting, but to take into account, like I said, a Z variable. And this Z variable will be unique to every instance. So we have to go and now declare this in every instance, right? For anything that's on the ground, it's just going to be zero. So we can initialize this in the parent depth object. And if we just middle click on here, it should just bring us over to it. So we can initialize this right here as zero. And if you haven't already, make sure, for example, in your player object and in every single object, in their create events, make sure you put event inherited or they're not going to inherit whatever we put in the parent depth object. So just remember, if you want it to keep the behavior from the parent object, put event inherited. Because otherwise, when you overwrite an event, it loses kind of its inheritance from the parent. So at the moment though, the player should, I shouldn't even have to write this. It should just be inheriting that from the parent. And if I go over to the scout and I have a look, you can see that it is. Now, at the moment, that's going to change nothing because everything is just on the ground. But for example, if you actually, if you had a bird that's just kind of maintaining a certain Z above the ground, you could just artificially set its Z to 10 or something and have it be floating above everything. And just before I show you the code of my jump, I just wanted to explain how I'm manipulating all of the different variables. So the important ones that I have are the move Z variable, the Z, which is the other axis that we're adding to the depth system and all of our objects that are part of it. And this is just the Y variable in the world. And I have set my game to a low FPS just so that you can see the changes really slowly. The move Z kind of represents the amount that I'm going to be changing my Z or Y. So you're going to see that both the Z and the Y are going to be changed by whatever move Z currently is. So if I go ahead and press the space bar, you will see the move Z variable is going to increase until the peak of our jump, and then it's going to decrease and become, well, actually it's going to become a negative number and become more and more negative. And you'll basically just see Z increase and then come back down to zero and the same with Y. So it should get right back down to this point after the jump. So if we go ahead and jump, let's see what happens. So press the space bar, you can see move Z is increasing. It's going to be added to Z every single frame. So you can see this is getting to be a large number and now it's starting to subtract from Z. And it's gonna keep doing that until we come back down to zero. And you can see we've reached kind of equilibrium again. We've returned to zero and Y has returned to the value it was before. So this is kind of a system that you're 
probably already using. You probably have like a jump speed or something that is manipulating the Y value. We basically just want to also have a Z variable that is just showing you kind of the manipulation from the start. So you can see Z is basically just Y minus whatever the start of Y was. Right, it's basically just its position in the air currently. So it's 22 pixels off the ground or whatever it is. So in the code, what that is going to look like if I come to my player object, you can see my step event, I'm just getting the input. This is my horizontal and vertical movement, not so important for this tutorial. And this is the jump right here. Um, so as you can see, basically what's happening is it actually starts here. So if Z is currently zero, it's going to fail this check. It's going to be executing this. So if it's less than zero, we're just gonna set it to zero. Z shouldn't ever, well, in my case, it shouldn't ever be less than the lowest point of the ground. Zero is just gonna kind of represent the very bottom of my Z axis. That might not be the case for you, but it's just how I'm gonna do it. And then when I jump, so once I press the spacebar, that's just a um, spacebar check. I'm just gonna go ahead and set move Z to a certain speed. This is completely arbitrary. For me, this is just equal to three. I could have just put three there, but it's actually just a variable. And I also go ahead and set Z to that as well. This, this is just kind of the first jump. And then all I do down here is also manipulate Y by that same amount. So you could have something in between that is checking for collisions. I haven't actually set that up in my project that also includes the Z. So to check if it's allowed to actually move there, I haven't done that. This is just for illustration. All right, so that's how that works. While it's in the air, what basically happens is Z is now larger than zero, which means we are in the air. Move Z is going to gradually decrease over time. Right, so it was three uh, and now it's going to decrease. And then it's also just going to keep being added to Z. So if it was three, now it's 2.8. So we add another 2.8 to Z. Z is now 5.8. And this isn't necessary. This is actually just so that if I'm not currently holding the space bar, which is basically just holding down the space bar right here, as you can see, and I'm still ascending in the air. So if move Z is still moving upwards, then I'm just gonna set it to zero, which kind of just stops the player and it's gonna fall back down. So it makes the jump kind of more controllable. You don't have to do that, but that's just kind of a little piece to show you that you can. And yeah, that's basically all there is to the system. So this will just continue um, as I was kind of illustrating before to move the player through the air. It's gonna keep adding to Z and move Z is just going to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it becomes negative And we are going to start decreasing Z again and also decreasing Y. Remember that we are still adding to Y. So that is kind of giving us the visual aspect and to actually hook that up to our depth system. As you can see, all we actually have to do is just add Z into consideration. And that should give you my current system. And you might want some kind of visual indicator as well. So at the moment, I have my shadow uh, still drawing at the Y position. If I wanted the shadow to kind of represent Y plus Z, as it is in the depth system, I could also add that to here, as we've shown in a previous illustration. Uh, and now it's kind of properly representing where it is in the game world. So I think that's it. I did just want to kind of formalize that depth system because as I said in the first video, it had been a couple years and I thought it was due to be updated. And again, just um, addressing that frequently asked question uh, and a couple of the tweaks that I made to the system to make it a little bit easier to use with the, the event perform instead of just using the draw self. Uh, if there's anything else, feel free to leave a comment. But yeah, that should be it. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope that helped. I hope you are well, and I will see you in the next tutorial.